don't know, it just felt very weird. Do, 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 Cassidy Quinn. Hey guys, it's me, Cassidy Quinn. So I was trying to think of what kind of video to do for this week, and then a wonderful lady named Carly Wixon said I should do a Q&A. Q&As are a thing that YouTubers do. Sometimes they happen when you run out of ideas of other things to do, or you're feeling uninspired, or you just want to do it. I have actually done one Q&A video before in my entire time on YouTube. If you've seen that video, leave a comment right now saying you're an OG or something. Because it was a long time ago. It must have been, I don't know, I think I like had bangs in the video, so it was probably five years ago? Welcome to the first ever episode of CQ&A with CQB, where I Q your A's. I mean, A your Q's. I just got that all wrong. But back when I did that one, there were not very many people watching my YouTube channel, which is also the case now. Getting questions for that Q&A was like pulling teeth. So thank you guys for being awesome and sending them now. I asked for your questions on Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, and I got them. So okay, let's get this CQ&A started. When you were five, what age were you? Is this a trick question? I was five, right? I was five. Why? <sighs> now I'm questioning everything. I was five. What if I'm wrong? What if, is there something else to this question? Do you always want to be a reporter or work in media? I would say yes, I always want to work in media in some form. And also yes, that I want to be a reporter always in some ways. I love talking to people, which really is what reporters do. They talk to people, they tell stories. I like to tell stories and look like an idiot and embarrass myself and attempt to entertain people. So whatever I can do to keep doing that, I wanna do it. And then with the term media, I mean, yes, TV, radio, internet media, social media, I wanna do all of the things. How does a person get the skills to be able to legally squat behind a fish tank for three minutes? Uh, if you didn't see this on my Instagram this week, I did a TV segment at a pet shop, and the idea was that at the beginning of the segment, I would pop up behind the fish tank and appear like I was in the fish tank. So they told us they were about to come to us. We were like 30 seconds away. So I'm squatting down, let me reenact it for you. I'm squatted down so that my head is just under where you could see in the fish tank, so I'm off camera. Waiting for my turn. And it was not 30 seconds, it was at least three minutes, I swear. So I'm just like getting my workout for the day in, squatting on the floor, and eventually I got to come up. <laughs> so how do you get those skills? I don't know. I don't know if it's necessarily something you train for or something you're just forced into, and the next thing you know, you're squatting at a fish tank. Life goals? Where do you think you'd be if you never started making YouTube videos? Whoa. That is a very good question, and one to which I do not have an answer. Okay, I'll try. That's very weird to think about, because even though at this point YouTube is not my full-time career, so many things that have happened in my life are really because of all the things I've done on YouTube. Like when I got my job at the TV station right now, my reel, the TV reel, you know, video clips you show to prospective employers was really just a bunch of clips of stuff I've done on YouTube. Like reporting at the Olympics or at the NFL London game and my boss like that, I guess, enough to hire me at least. <laughs> and then even before that, one of the reasons I got to go to the Olympics was because I convinced my college teacher that I would be making video blogs about my work at the Olympics and therefore they let me take a semester off of school and get journalism school credit for going to the Olympics. So, to get back to your question, if I never started making YouTube videos, I think I would probably be doing something similar to what I'm doing, but in a more typical way, like I might be reporting in a small town somewhere doing more serious types of things. And thank goodness I get to do the fun things that I do, I love it so much, and thanks to the internet for letting me be weird and explore that that's the kind of thing I want to do. Oh, that got kind of sentimental for a minute. What kind of beer do you like? Oh, excellent question, and one I would have not been able to answer a year ago. I live in Portland, Oregon, so there are a lot of breweries here. And when I moved here, I told myself, you're gonna have to try to get into the beer thing, because I really didn't like beer before, or I thought I didn't like beer, but really what I had tried was like the watery, gross beer you drink in college because it's really cheap, and then super hoppy IPAs that my dad and brother like. And what I've discovered is I really like sour beers, and also dark, chocolatey, coffee-tasting, sweeter beers. Mmm! Now I kinda want a beer. 
Finish the video first. Where do you get all of your nice clothes? Um, did you just compliment me? Thank you. I have no idea where I got the clothes I'm wearing right now, except, oh, my jeans. Jeans, I got them from Old Navy. I buy a lot of my clothes at Macy's, uh, JCPenney's, Forever 21. I can be 21 forever, right? Nordstrom Rack. And then just like random places that I walk by when I'm strolling the streets. That sounds wrong. But you know, you just see a shop and there's a big sale sign in the window and you have to go in there because you have no self-control, but it's on sale, so it's okay. Do you ever sleep? and make a day in the life video of Cassidy Quinn. Um, yes, Bev, I do sleep. Probably not enough. I do it. I know how to do it. I'm good at it when I actually make myself do it. I just stay up too late sometimes. Like right now, I'm shooting this video at 11 o'clock at night. And I don't know, would you guys want to see a day in the life video? Are you curious about the things I do or do you see enough of it already in my weekly vlogs? I don't know, let me know in the comments. How can you adjust to your multiple job juggling and when do you sleep? Is everyone just concerned for my sleep? I appreciate that. With the multiple job juggling, so if you don't know, I am full-time a reporter at a TV station in Portland. I then obviously make three videos a week here on my channel. And then part-time, I host an overnight radio show, make to-do lists. I like to check things off. I enjoyed that more than I should. But I am by no means a professional at this. I get stressed out. <laughs> it happens. Ask anyone who is close to me. <laughs> okay, this is a long one. <laughs> Yes, I don't expect you to answer those as it would probably be career suicide for you. Thank you for the career suicide, Dan. I cannot answer most of those questions because yes, I work for a news station, nor do I want this video to get political. But I will answer the part about deliberately slanting stories. I don't really do a lot of political stories, so when I'm doing a story at a pet shop, in a fish tank for example, you could be wherever on the political spectrum and you, I think, should still like a segment about fish and bearded dragons. But for the rest of the station, how it works is there are two, I believe, editorial meetings throughout the day where everyone kind of sits around and they decide what they're gonna cover that day. You get this story, you get this story. At five o'clock, you're gonna have it with this angle. At six o'clock, you're gonna cover it with this angle. And no, they don't sit there and go, hey, will you, um, say that Trump is wonderful, and then will you say that you hate our president? They don't do that at all. I think more accurately, we're actually trying to cover all of the sides without it coming off as positive or negative to either one. For example, day after the election, I was tasked with doing a little social media segment about how people were feeling when the election was over. And this was actually very difficult for me because on one hand, you have people super excited, Trump won. You had a lot of people who were not excited about it. And I really wasn't trying to pick a side. I was trying to represent everyone equally, no matter how I was feeling about it. So no, we do not deliberately slant stories. <laughs> Although I was totally trying to slant my story at the pet store today. I really wanted to talk about my hedgehog that I used to have as a child, and I did get to. Slant complete. Is that how you slant stories? Pizza or tacos? Definitely tacos. And I can't talk about it any more than that. <laughs> Are you guys sick of that joke yet? Did you keep up on Tinder even after your brother helped you with it and told you in the same breath to never use it? So if you didn't see it, early last summer, my brother and I made a video of my brother teaching me how to use Tinder. And it actually is one of my favorite videos I've ever done because I think my brother is hilarious. And here's the truth. I stayed on Tinder for maybe a month after that. I went on a date with one guy. I don't know, I just don't think it was for me. Like if you can be one of those people that finds the person you're meant to be with on a dating app, more power to ya. But I felt very weird about it. Especially being a person on the internet, so anyone that can find me on Tinder automatically knows more about me than I know about them because they can find me on the internet or at least that's how I felt and I don't know, it just felt very weird. I would rather meet people in person. Plus, I only have limited space on my phone so every app better be useful to me or I need to delete it so I can take more pictures. So it was deleted. I swiped it left. Do you play or have you played any sports? I've never been super into or good at, I should say, the team sports. I get very competitive and then I get mad at people if they don't pass to me or if I'm not doing well. So I did play soccer for one year in seventh grade. I played volleyball for one year, freshman year of high school, and I played lacrosse for two years in high school. Oh, I guess I also attempted to play t-ball when I was like five, but I hated it and just wouldn't stop crying. But I do still do the sports like snowboarding, wakeboarding, wake surfing, hiking, that kind of thing. I like active 
athletic things, just not necessarily the team things. Oh, and don't even get my family started about how bad I am at playing tennis. Oh god, that could be a video all in itself. Why are you such an amazing person? And do you have any cats? Uh, number one, you're very sweet. And no, I do not have any cats, nor have I ever had a cat. I used to really want a cat when I was a kid, and my parents would never let me have them because my dad does not like cats. So now I'm not a cat person. I do kind of want a pet now, though. I'm thinking maybe start small with a fish because I can't even take care of a plant. So I don't know, if you think I should get a pet, let me know in the comments below, what should I get? Oh, and Kimberly also said she's been watching my videos from the beginning, so you are wonderful and I love you too. You're so sweet. What is the most ridiculous item or food you would request for a concert rider? I mean, food, I would probably request sushi. Just like a lot of sushi. Oh, actually though, coconut cake. There used to be this restaurant in Seattle that made the best coconut cake. I loved it so much, my mom would buy me a slice of it for my birthday every year. Not a whole cake, because it was super expensive, but just a slice. Oh, it was so good. So if someone could find that coconut cake again, I would like that, please. On my concert rider, of course. And just in life. And then for non-food item, can you request extra phone batteries? Because that would really come in handy. I mean, while we're on the subject of pets, can I just have a hedgehog? Like, just for the concert? Just a little hedgehog to hang out with, and then after the concert, Whoever owns that hedgehog can have it back again. Well, on that note, I think that's all the questions I'm gonna answer today. Thank you guys for asking ridiculous, wonderful, sometimes personal questions. Let me know in the comments below what ridiculous thing you would put on your concert rider. That is just a fun question. Give this video a thumbs up because I answered some weird questions today. Don't forget to click that subscribe button if you feel like it. And I will see you on Friday for For Real Friday. Bye!